Hey guys, so most of you know by now I've been uh, horribly injured, so it's going to be a, a while, at least a few more weeks before I can uh, make, make some new videos. So I decided um, for the time being it would be a pretty good time to re-upload some of my older reviews that have uh, since gotten blocked. We're going to be starting with Moggy because uh, someone recently requested it and I didn't actually know this review had gotten blocked because no one tells me any of these things. And then in a few more days, I will re-upload the uh, fairy tale review. Now keep in mind, these videos are about three years old. You know, I was a young college student. I, I was a lot skinnier. I had a lot more hope in my eyes. There was no pandemic. No, no civil unrest. Ugh. Anyway, yeah, so n until I'm better, enjoy some uh, premium legacy content. Hey guys, welcome to my full series review for Moggy the Labyrinth of Magic. Now this series only ended a couple of days ago. I'm excited. Let's get into this. So Moggy the Labyrinth of Magic is a shonen battle manga that was written and illustrated by Shinobu Otaka and it was serialized between 2009 and 2017 in Weekly Shonen Sunday. Moggy takes place in a fictional world inspired by the stories of the Arabian Nights. This world is divided divided into many countries and kingdoms, some ruled by republics, some ruled by monarchies. There are rich members of society, poor members of society, and there's, there's even a good bit of slavery going on. This is also a world full of magic. Many people can draw from the Magoi within themselves, which is basically, you know, like the chakra of this world, and use it to create magic. Our story follows Ali Baba, the third prince of the kingdom of Balbad. Now when the series starts, he isn't in Balbad. He's working as a cart driver, okay? Some, some shit went down. And eventually he runs into a young boy named Aladdin. Now Aladdin is also accompanied by his friend a djinn named Ugo. Because Aladdin never knew his parents, Ugo sort of raised him, taught him everything he knows about the world. But because he is a djinn, a magical creature, he really can't show his full body all the time and he stays inside of Aladdin's flute. So what makes Aladdin so special? Well, he is what is known in this world as a Magi. While normal magicians can only draw from the limited amount of Magoi in themselves to create magic, Aladdin can draw an unlimited amount of Magoi from the Rook, this massive invisible force that controls fate. It's where all life begins as well as where all life ends. Aladdin is one of the four Magi that currently exist in the world, and the Magi's main role is to choose a king, choose someone who they can lead to greatness to eventually become a leader of the world so that the world can thrive and be peaceful. Speaking of which, after seeing how powerful Aladdin is, Alibaba suggests that the two of them form a team and try to conquer a dungeon. Now dungeons are these mysterious structures that started appearing about 15 years ago. Many people have attempted to conquer these dungeons, obtain the treasures hidden inside, but very, very few people have actually succeeded. But feeling confident, Alibaba and Aladdin make their way into the first dungeon and are actually able to conquer it with the help of a slave girl, Morgiana, who they helped free. This is when the ruler of the dungeon, a jinn called Amon, sees the potential inside Alibaba, the potential of someone who could one day become a king, so he grants Ali Baba the treasure that lies at the end of each dungeon, a jinn's power. Which is something now that Ali Baba will be able to call upon whenever he gets into a pickle. So after that whole excursion, Aladdin and Ali Baba decide to part ways for a little while. At that moment they have a few different things they both want to take care of, but they promise that they will meet up soon so they can go on many many more adventures together. Now what do these adventures have in store? Well, they'll be traveling to new lands, training to become stronger, conquering more dungeons, meeting all sorts of friends along the way, and of course, participating in a few wars that may or may not determine the outcome of the universe. So yeah, times get tough, but you can bet your ass that Alibaba and Aladdin will be able to accomplish anything so long as their opponents are able to listen, sit down, and have a long political discussion. So there you go, that's the premise of Magi. Now, as is the case with most long-running shonen series, this series is divided into multiple different story arcs. Now, this isn't the longest battle manga ever, so you'll be happy to know that pretty much every story arc in this series is very important to the overall plot. There's no real throwaway arcs that can just be considered filler. Pretty much everything serves a purpose to develop the plot, the world, and the characters. And what I love is that each arc feels big, it feels epic and massive just because the people that they deal with in every arc are, are pretty big deals. Because of Alibaba and Aladdin's positions, you know, as a Magi and a prince, that gives them a pretty decent connection to some of the people who, you know, run the world. And crazy things are always happening. There's never a dull moment in Magi. And I'm gonna just say it right now, this story is phenomenal. The quality of the writing is really what sets Magi apart from so many other battle manga. The writing in this series 
really had no right to be this amazing. But Shinobu Otaka just creates this massive, amazing world, so many intricate and deep characters. Magi can get very deep and philosophical at certain points, almost too much so, but it's never really enough to where it gets boring. And I alluded to this a bit earlier, but man, Oh man, the politics. This is a battle manga where half of the battles come from dialogue. There are so many times in battle manga where entire fights, entire wars could be avoided if two people just put their differences aside and sat down to talk with each other, understand their different viewpoints. And Magi actually takes this into account. If there are times when large-scale bloodshed can be avoided, then the characters will do their best to make sure it is avoided. Now obviously things won't always go their way, but you know it's really surprising and honestly really fresh for this manga to sometimes break the norm and choose to not have massive fights in favor of a story that actually makes sense. And you might be thinking, well, hold on, this is a battle manga, I don't want to listen to people talk for two volumes. But like I said about the writing, it's just so damn good. There's literally like 20 chapters in a row in this manga where there are no action scenes at all. Yet the writing and the characters were so good that I just didn't care. But shit cannon will hit the fan and when it does, man, and the action and the emotional scenes here are some of the best that I've seen in a battle manga. Otaka just hits all the right notes that makes a fantastic battle manga. The battles are gigantic and epic and the character's powers are so inventive and awesome. And the series definitely knows how to bring the feels. But it also knows when you know, take a break from all that and, and be batshit hilarious. Cause I'm gonna be honest, there are certain points in Magi where it has no right to be as funny as it is. And all of these elements come together to make a 37 volume series that is very, very special. It's not perfect though. Now, I will give Otaka credit, she definitely has some of the biggest metaphorical balls I've ever seen. Like seriously, she doesn't give a fuck. She'll take the story in this crazy different direction that no one was expecting and it just stays like that for a long ass time. The first time this really happens is a little more than halfway through the series and the story arc she delivers here, in my opinion, was really, really great. But you can definitely tell that not everyone thought so because the ending of this arc was FAST AS FUCK! Other than that though, I didn't really have much a problem with the pacing. I thought the series flowed very naturally, everything seemed to make sense, and she just did a fantastic job. And then you have the ending. Four now, uh, for one, a lot of people seem to think that the final arc of Magi sucks. Like, a lot of people told me going in, oh man, Magi gets really shitty, like, you know, the last 70, 80 chapters. Now, to be quite honest, I couldn't disagree more with that statement, okay? I loved the final arc in Magi. The series does go in a very different direction. It's a bit startling at first, but the quality of the writing was still there, the great characters were still there. I really didn't see a problem. Until about the last five chapters of this series, holy shit. The only thing I can think of is that she must have been forced to end this series early, which is such a shame because the series was about to end anyway. Like seriously, for the longest time it was building up to the finale, the pacing was fine. Felt like there maybe needed to be 10, 15 chapters left, but all of a sudden, bam, 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 it's over. Now, like it wasn't a bad finale, like what actually happened in the finale isn't really that big a deal, it was fine. But it just felt so absolutely rushed, it was really, really unfortunate. And I mean, the series being rushed is just evident in the final chapter, the epilogue. So much of the series needed to be concluded in just 20 pages that the final panel of the series is actually exposition trying to conclude everything. I mean, the series at the very least needed to Two chapters worth of epilogue. No, I didn't get any of that. So while I highly doubt it was the author's fault, because Shinobu Otaka is an absolutely excellent writer, the ending of the series really brings it down a bit. I was pretty disappointed. But anyway, let's talk about some of the characters in Magi now, as is the case with most long-running battle manga. Magi has a massive cast of characters, and this is one of those rare times when I can safely say that I loved pretty much every single character in this series. And it's also pretty rare for me to say this, but the main character, Alibaba, is my favorite character in this series. This guy is absolutely amazing, okay? He's a great fighter, he's a genius, he's funny. You also feel really bad for him and can sympathize with him a lot of times, whether it's during the more serious moments or even the comedic moments. He's definitely what I look for in a great main character. But of course, you have the other main character, Aladdin, who I also really love. He's not one of my 
favorite characters. He starts off as a very innocent kid, it's hard not to like him, and his character development throughout the series is some of the best. And then you have their friend Morgiana, a former slave and a member of the Phanaris tribe, which is this mysterious tribe of warriors, and basically if you're a part of this tribe, then you're a crazy badass. Morgiana is no exception. She, she is quite the badass, a really great character, though I do wish the series focused a bit more on her in the second half of the series, because really, during that part of the series, she sort of takes a back seat to being a minor character. Now, like I said, Aladdin isn't the only Magi. You also have Judar, the Magi of the Co-Empire. Judar is fucking nuts, okay? He's sort of like the, the anti-hero type. Loved his character. In fact, the whole Co-Empire, the whole royal family here, oh, beautiful. One of the princes, Akuryu, who becomes a major character later on, fucking loved him. He had a great arc. One of the princesses, Kogyoku, fucking loved her. One of the other princesses, Hakue, fucking loved her. The rest of the fam, I loved all of them except for Koha. I, I, okay, I didn't really care for Koha that much, but he's not a super major character, so yeah, yeah, whatever. And as for the villains, there honestly aren't very many characters in this series who are just straight up evil. Most of the conflicts come from differing political opinions, so it can sometimes be a bit difficult uh, deciding who to root for because, you know, oh, I like characters on this side and I like characters on this side. I don't want them to fight. It's just a misunderstanding. Make it stop. But there are some clear antagonists and I think they do the job pretty well. They're very menacing and evil and you just, just want to see them get their heads chopped off. Oh, am I forgetting about someone? Am I forgetting about Sinbad? The King of Sindria. Holy shit. I'm gonna be honest, Sinbad is one of the greatest characters in manga I have ever read and I really don't want to talk about him much because so much of his greatness was revealed to me as I was reading it. I'm like, holy shit, Sinbad, you gotta stop, dude. You're fucking amazing. And he's such a deep and complex character too. You never know what's going through his head. You never know what he's gonna do. So amazing. So yeah, great story for the most part. An excellent cast of characters. Let's let's talk about the aesthetics. Now Magi has a pretty charming art style. The character designs all look really great. The backgrounds on the world look excellent for a weekly manga. I'm not gonna say it's the best I've ever seen, but it's certainly serviceable and I really like the style. Though the detail that she puts into the fight is pretty excellent. When characters have their Jin powers equipped, man, it just looks beautiful. The series does have quite the cartoony side though, because when things get a bit silly and humorous, this happens. The art just completely changes, it loses all detail and you can only make out who the characters are by the shapes of their head. And I'm gonna be honest, I love when this happened, it never felt out of place. You know, all the goofy shit, all the boobs, all that stuff, it was all very distant from all the, the horrible, serious parts of the plot. And overall, it was just a very appealing art style and probably one of my favorites in the battle manga. So there you go, those are my thoughts on Magi. Now despite the rather rushed and disappointing ending, I still think this series is absolutely phenomenal and definitely a must read for fans of battle manga. And in fact, I'd go as far as to say this is currently my second favorite battle manga, only behind, of course, the champion Full Metal Alchemist. It's unbelievably well written, it has excellent characters that go through great development, it has a great art style, and it's definitely a series that I see myself coming back to in the future. So with all that being said, I give it my final score of a 9 out of 10. So if you are interested in picking up Mogging after watching this review, I uh, hope I was able to persuade you. The series is in print and currently being released by Viz Media. Now, uh, as of the time I'm recording this, I believe 26 of the 37 volumes are out. They're doing bi-monthly releases. So unfortunately, it's still going to be a while before the series wraps up in English. I mean, at least it is available in English. There's also an anime series that has adapted about 21 or so volumes of the manga. There is also The Adventures of Sinbad, a spin-off manga that follows The Adventures of Sinbad, which has also gotten its own anime series. And there you have it. That's all I had to say. Thank you all so much for watching. You can leave your thoughts on Magi in the comments below. And with that, I will see you guys in my next full series review for Pluto.